color change is a change of color based off of the temperature of light. This stuff is all natural. Wow, that color is That's incredible. very purple. Today, seeing is believing as we check out these gemstone chameleons. Okay, chameleons change color. Right, so. yeah, no, this is enticing stuff. Oh! Whoa. Yeah. So these are all Alexandrite. Oh, I don't so, think I've seen this much Alexandrite in one place before. And these are very large carat weight sizes for Alexandrite. So Alexandrite is a type of chrysoberyl. Originally, it was found in the Ural Mountains in Russia. It's known for having a very special quality, which is color change. I was gonna say, as far as color change goes, this is probably the most famous. Yes. So and, dramatic. And actually, early on, color change was often called the Alexandrite effect. Color change is a change of color based off of the temperature of light. We see the visible light spectrum, which is about 400 to 700 nanometers. Anytime wavelengths of light hit an object, the object absorbs or transmits wavelengths, which actually are color. When you have color change, what you have there is an object that has equal sized transmission windows. So transmission windows meaning the emission of a color in two different spots of the visible light spectrum. Right now, what would you say this color is? I'd say it's like a greenish blue. Yes. This guy is a little greener That's than That's really green. That's and that guy is kind of good amount of yellow. Almost like smoky quartz colored. White light is actually a combination of all the colors of the spectrum, but there are a lot of different temperatures of light. So daylight is a cooler temperature light. Mm -hmm. When cooler temperatures hit Alexandrite, for example, you get this green color because cooler lights possess more of the blue-green wavelengths. When mm -hmm. warmer light hits the gemstone, it yeah. warms up a good bit. Oh, that's nice. This cabochon is really special because this one is actually from Russia. So Alexandrite was originally found in the Ural Mountains in Russia, and for a while that was the only locality. By the end of the century, it had pretty much been mined out, and so now Alexandrite from Russia is quite rare. But it's since been found in Brazil and places in Africa. This gem is from Brazil. This gem is from Madagascar. But of course, Russian Alexandrite is the most prized. The strength of the color change is important too. This change to red is amazing. The prized, most valuable change is this bluish green to like a, a wine, wine red. red. Yeah. This stuff, all that we have on the table is all natural, and we got the documents to prove it. Alexandrite is colored by chromium. The chromium is responsible for the green and the, and red. the red. You know? That's super cool. Sort of turn a little grape colored. It's and these guys pretty here. purple. It's a very unique property in color change. Alexandrite might be the most famous gemstone for possessing that property, but it's not the only one. Mm, so I kind of want to open another box. I love it. Ooh, this is one of my favorite gems. These are all garnets. Mm -hmm. These are all natural, untreated. You're really not gonna see treated garnets for the most part. Garnets are actually part of a very large series. It's called an isomorphous series, which means that there is atomic replacement, whereby you get a huge variety from a chemical composition perspective. So you have a base structure, and then you have some replacements. So what that means is there's a combination of factors that influences things like color, SG, and so here you have color change garnets. I love the color of this one. They're so pretty. The cause of color in garnet is a tricky thing because you have that atomic replacement, but by and large, the color change element is caused by chromium ions. Cool. Wow, this one is great. Ooh. Really nice, deep red. So you have a cooler purple. Mm -hmm. So we should clarify color change and color shift. A lot of people classify color shift as a change one position away on the color wheel, so red to purple. Color change would be you skipped 
a position on the color wheel. So this actually technically is classified as a color shift. So you have that dark bluish green color. It's easier to see from the side, I find. There it is. And so you have this really nice dark purple. It's important to recognize color change or color shift is not the same as pleochroism. Color change or color shift is a change due to the temperature of light. Pleochroism is a change due to the viewing direction because of how light passes through. Garnet is part of the isometric crystal system or cubic crystal system and does not display pleochroism, but of course, obviously, can display color change or color shift. Mm -hmm. So even though we have a long recorded history of garnet. We know that the ancient Egyptians, for example, were fond of garnet. Color change garnet was not found until the 1970s, and it wasn't until the 80s where it became more popular after its discovery in Tanzania. Yeah, so it's important to remember that there's a lot in the gem world that we know, but also there's a lot that we don't know. Oh, that one's, that that one's, one's strong. That one's really strong. Yeah. Okay, so that's the daylight. That's more potent than any of the alexandrite that we were looking at. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's a really nice one. So that's a bluish green and a really nice purplish red. Color change garnet, one of my favorites. Let's Super see what's cool. in the next box, huh? Oh, yeah. Wow, these are pretty vibrant colors. Wow, I mean, that, that looks like a full-on amethyst crystal. That does. Wow, that color is, that is incredible. very purple. These are in color change sapphires. All of these are lab created, mm -hmm. except for one. Yeah. One is natural. That one. Well, that was easy. Lab color change sapphires, they just have a certain color. To me, it's like an underlying grayish factor. So it's like a grayish purple, oh. a grayish green. I don't know, you can just tell. But the other reason why I could tell is because several of these actually have the color change in the face up viewing direction, which typically is not the case. So like oh. here, like I can see blue, green, and purple at the same time. And yeah, often actually lab sapphire is intended to imitate alexandrite. So that's why when they make a lab sapphire, they make it the blue, green to the red, purplish mm -hmm. red color. Most of these have been loose faceted gemstones. We've had a little bit of jewelry, but it's really fun to have color change gemstones in a piece of jewelry because, you know, you can go to a dinner party and you can go in the daylight and it uh, can be one color and then when you leave at night, it can, it can be another color. Color change sapphires is typically colored by chromium or vanadium. There are other coloring agents such as iron, titanium, cobalt that can be used, but they're more rare. Yeah. Super fun. You want to get the next box? Let's do it. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Whoa, that, Whoa. Was, that was something. Changed color from when I pulled it out of the box. I think because we've got a mix of lights going color on. Color temperatures. Here. So these actually look quite similar to some of the lab sapphires, I think. Don't yeah, you think? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, you could definitely say that. I'm gonna venture a guess and say this is fluorite. Color change fluorite. I was noticing the high clarity, a slightly lower luster. Fluorite, of course, is a four on the most scale of hardness. So you've got a blue color in daylight or a colder light, and then it changes to a purple in warm light. Very nice. These are great collector stones, especially if you're just beginning your collection, because they're relatively affordable, they're in large carat weights, and they have high transparency, high clarity, and they have a cool color change effect. Mm -hmm. These are a little bit different from a cause of color perspective. Again, earlier we talked about dispersed metal ions, chromium, vanadium. That's not the case with fluorite. No, so fluorite is allochromatic, meaning in its purest form, it's colorless. It doesn't have an element in its chemical composition that gives it color inherent to it. So it has to get its color from external sources. These can be impurities, or in the case of most fluorite, natural irradiation. These, on the other hand, are irradiated by man. These are from China. A lot of Chinese fluorite is treated with irradiation to enhance its color. So we actually don't know if the irradiation process produced the color change or if it was it's already, there. already there. However, it likely had a significant effect on it. Either way, very cool gemstones. I really yeah. love fluorite. Big fan. Let's go to the next spot. Cool. I feel bad I've been opening all of them. No, of course. Ooh. 
Ooh. nice cuts. Yeah, these are really pretty cuts, really pretty colors. This is often called like a rectangular octagonal cut. These are Turkish diaspora. Oh. For you also may hear it referred to as Zoltanite. That's actually a trademark name. You see this like light yellow greenish color, and then they change to this really sweet peachish color. I think it's really pretty. The vast majority of faceted diaspora comes from Turkey. The color change is subtle, but actually that's one of my favorite parts about it. I really like neutrals that have a hint of color. It's just a fun item to have in your collection. I agree. Diaspore and corundum have a similar chemical composition. Corundum is an aluminum oxide. Diaspore is an aluminum oxide hydroxide. There are some similarities with diaspore and corundum from a coloring agent perspective. So in diaspore, you can have anything from an iron titanium charge transfer process. It can be colored by vanadium or it can be colored by chromium. Are you ready for the last box? Yeah. Ah, this is a fun one. So this is actually called Xandrite. Oh, I, that was in my head. This is actually a proprietary stone that JTV developed. So JTV is one of gemstones.com's authorized retailers. Here, you can have this Xandrite, which is a man-made color change glass. You've got these really big, vibrant colors. It's colored by rare earth elements. Some have color shift. Some have color change, and because it's glass, you can have really large carat weights. Mm -hmm. It's pretty affordable. The clarity is high, the transparency is high. So it was named by one of our late co-founders, Jerry Sisk. And because the color change affects Mimic Alexandrite, Jerry chose the name Xandrite, kind of in homage to that gemstone. It's a really fun one to have. Yeah, this one goes from purple to blue. Yeah, this one has this like peachy color. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a really nice affordable way to get your first color change gem. Yeah, definitely an entry point for sure. Okay, so as you know, we always do a closer look on this channel. What are you picking? Okay, so I'm actually gonna pick this garnet because it had the best color change. It did, and I think. And I love garnet, but this one just had such a good visual representation of what was going on internally. And I just loved it. So it feels a little blasphemous to have a color change episode and not pick Alexandrite for my closer look. That's a good one. So I'm gonna go with one of these fluorites. <laughs> <laughs> I always choose fluorite. I thought it had some very nice color change compared to some of the other gemstones on the table. I feel bad for the Alexandrite because it's the OG. It's the OG. But rather than put some respect on Alexandrite's name, I will instead choose fluorite irradiated in China. So take a closer look. <laughs>